Good morning, friends. It's good to join you again this morning for a time of devotion. And uh, this morning, we're going to continue to look at the book of Acts and uh, continue on with our study of the early church, especially looking at the life of the early disciples. You know, they lived in exciting times. I think we all know every time we read the book of Acts, we are so excited when we see, you know, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, you know, the, the way the disciples walk the streets and uh, how their shadow healed the sick. I don't know how we long for those times. And you know what? God's, God's timing is upon us. And these, these are the days that we're going to see, you know, the manifestation of God's presence and God's glory again. I want to encourage us. Let's be in expectation. Let's believe that God's about to do something big on the earth. And he's already started in many places. And even in our church, we see trickles of it. We've heard miracles that happen through the years. But I believe that from trickles, it's going to be an avalanche, a tsunami of miracles. How many of us are ready to receive that? I'm ready to receive that. And you know, as we look at the early church, we're going to learn some principles that they operated on as they walked out that favor and their blessings in, the, in which they lived in. You know, it's not they were trying to get God's favor and God's blessings. That's the old covenant church. You know, the new covenant is we are already favored. We are already blessed. And they knew that and they walked that out. They lived that out. And so we're going to look at some of the elements of what caused them to be able to function in that way, you know, and just break it down for us so that we can recapture what is rightfully God's, you know, return to Christ, His inheritance, what is rightfully His through our lives for which He has called us into. And, you know, we, we're just going to look at the first element, which is faith. And it says here in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. Now let's just stop there. We all know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, they devoted themselves. I like the word devoted. You know, let's, let's uh, just begin to ask ourselves this question. To what degree are we devoted to the word of God? How does, how does this work? You know, in, in the natural, the more we eat, the more we become full and we don't feel like eating. But in the spiritual, it's the other way around, friends. The things of the spirit and the things of the flat flesh are directly opposed to each other. Let's think about that for a while. You know, the things of the flesh and the things of the spirit are di directly opposed to one another. You know, when in the spirit, the more we eat of the word of God, like the early disciples, the more hungrier we become for God himself. You know, that's one of the evidence or one of the manifestation of the favor and the blessing of God that is upon their life. They knew they were favored. They knew they were blessed. Their favor and their blessing was not dependent on their circumstances. Circumstantially, it was a difficult situation. Just like some of us might be facing in our workplace, in our, in our, in our society, in the, in the current environment that we are in. You know, we might think that God's favor and God's blessing is not upon us. You know, friends, we've got to stop thinking that way. And we've got to start believing who we really are in Christ. We are favored and we are blessed. That's how the early church operated. They never operated based on their circumstances, based on what they saw with their natural eyes, but they operated out of a supernatural dimension. And so all of us, you know, this is how we start the day. I'm favored and I am blessed by the Lord. You know, because of, not because of my actions, but because of what Christ has done on the cross. And they... The reason they were so hungry for the word of God is because they knew this. They knew that they were favored and they were blessed. Can you imagine how our perspective will be? How different we look at the word of God. If we don't come to the word of God out of that kind of wrong kind of fear, now the right kind of fear is good. It's good to have the fear of the Lord, which is the reverence for God, the honor for God, the worship of God, now all those in all those areas of the fear of God is wonderful, but not the fear that God's about to punish us 
And God will not bless us because of our actions or our thoughts. God blesses us on the merit of what Christ has already done on the cross. We stand on Christ's victory, friends. And so that's the kind of favor that they had. Everything was fresh on their minds. So they went to the apostles' teaching. They were hungry. They were thirsty because they were the favored people. And you know, faith, faith comes by knowing that you're favored and blessed. Faith comes by the word of God. And the other aspect of faith is we, get, we begin to grow in our faith when we see the faithfulness of our Father. You know, it's like in, even in the natural when you see that someone is faithful, you begin to have faith on them. You know that God is faithful. We recount the wonderful things that God has done in our lives. We recount how He has brought us out of sickness, disease, and He has kept us from danger. You know, it's, it's so wonderful when you recount the faithfulness of God, faith begins to rise. Now friends, I wanna encourage you, just take a few moments today And just think after this devotion about God's faithfulness, how faithful He has been to each and every one of us, to our children, to our family. You know, it's easy for us to get into that negative mindset and say, God, why doesn't this happen? And why doesn't that happen? I prayed for this and I've asked for this and all these things have not happened. You know, we can go on and on and on. But friends, let's stop right there and let's recount the faithfulness of God. And that's what the early church did. You know, how did they do it? They went and they broke bread. You know, breaking bread is powerful. Breaking bread increases our faith. How? By looking at the finished work of the cross. Christ's body was broken for us so that we can have life and life to the fullest. Christ's body was broken for us so that we can experience the vibrancy of the life of Christ in us. You see, this is how they they constantly drew near to God through the the elements, the broken body of Christ. And and they, they, they drew near to God through prayer. It says three things here, the word of God to, through the bread, through the breaking of bread and the, and the prayers. You know, prayers are so powerful. Prayers are two-way communication with God. We communicate with God. We speak to God. And the marvelous thing is this, take a few moments of silence and let him speak to us. Now, how have we, you know, we need to rediscover. How do we take time to wait upon the Lord? You know, reading the word of God is one thing. Hearing this devotion is one thing. But after this, you know, just silence everything as you drive or as you cook or as you, as you, know, as you prepare for the day. Just take time to reflect and think about God's faithfulness upon our lives. You know, and then he says that, you know, as, they do, as we do that, we, we will see that we will experience exactly what the early church did. All came upon every soul. You know, as we fix our eyes on the faithfulness of Christ on the cross, all will begin to fill our heart. A great sense of wonder. We'll not be a cynical people anymore, but we will be a people who are constantly filled with the awe of the presence of God. And it says here, you know, when people who are filled with awe, you know what happens? The natural progressions is signs and wonders and miracles become so natural. We become naturally supernatural. It's just natural that you and I become supernatural, just like the early church. You know, we don't have to compare even with them and say that hopefully one day we will be like them. Friends, we are there. We have the same favor. We have the same blessings upon our life. And that favor and that blessing comes through the presence of God in our life. Let's be so conscious of God in our lives, His faithfulness, His word through the breaking of bread. Let's not wait until Sunday to break bread. I encourage us, take time to break bread. You know, even on a daily basis so that you can, you and I can see the faithfulness of God, experience the awe and the faithfulness of God. So I want to pray for you. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray that you will fill them with a fresh revelation this morning. That we are filled with the blessings and the favor of God. Lord, I thank you that as they step out today, whether in in their homes, in in working from home or, or into their workplaces, 
I pray that they will have that sense of awe. We will have a sense of awe today. Let rivers of water and all those who are hearing God this morning be a people who are filled with a sense of wonder. May that sense of wonder never leave your people, Lord God. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are going with us, you are with us. Your presence invokes and awakens a hunger for you, Lord. And that comes through your word. We, can, we, we give you praise and we give you thanks. We commit ourselves, our families, our loved ones into your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you, friends. See you tomorrow. Amen.